Go. The challenge in building the mattress has been in creating an active form from basically passive structures, hair and springs and twines. And so finding that happy medium where there's flexibility and proper center of gravity, uh, a piece that will stay basically in position as it flexes without ripping away from its foundations has all been um, thought out. We've achieved that by the creation of baffles that have been set into the flex points which you've seen in earlier segments of this uh, video. I'm going to show you how the piece flexes and um, it has been understood. Do I need to come forward at all? No, you just stay okay. where you are. After a great deal of contemplation and uh, trials and errors, it has been found that, that the mattress was not originally a single piece. If it had been, there had to have been some type of segmentation up at the um, cervical section of the mattress. The cervical and the dorsal areas act independently from the lumbar area where the hips set and therefore the, the um, density of the materials internally have to be a bit different which allows for more flexibility and the density of the stuffings have to be a bit less at flexing points so the piece can actually flex. I'm going to turn the, the cervical piece, the head piece, over. You can see how it flexes and pushes the stuffing downward. Can you catch that from there? Mm -hmm. And it flexes upward and much like a futon, a modern futon, it takes the stuffing that's inside this pocket and pushes it up over the base of the lumbar and then it just uses leverage. Let me come forward and do that sure. last part again. You don't need to say it, just let me see it. Okay, I'm going to open it up just slightly. Mm -hmm. Good. Let the dorsal down. Let the dorsal down. We'll lift the dorsal up over the lumbar. Lumbar stays basically stationary. This is packed much more tightly, but there is a membrane, if you remember in the earlier segment, that pulls down attaches to the spring deck, allowing the dorsal to work kind of basically independently. So it's, it's a, a hinge made of cloth. Push up over the top, you can see the stuffing and the burlap sloughing over the top, and there it stays into position. When I pick up the seat, draw us back over the top, you want to come over and take a Sorry about that. Take a peek in. You can see again that the the uh, stuffing wants to luft right through the um, flex point, and it will draw itself back in as it flexes over. And it's the lumber. It's the wood. The frame. The finished frame holds everything together. It acts as a fulcrum and a wedge. And so those two tensions basically hold the piece in stasis. I'm going to open it back up. And it wiggles no more. It does not wiggle. It's pretty sturdy. Deploys. The seat deploys. Dorsal opens. And here comes the cervical portion of the back. We need to oil the hinges and it's completely deployed. Now the next step will be filling the valleys that have been created by... Shall the, I come toward you now? Yeah, come a little bit closer. Next step will be filling the valleys that have been created by the um, bridal stitches and the, um, and the um, blind stitches that create the firm edging with just a slight bit of hair. There'll be a, a cotton topper that goes over the top of the hair and then a, an internal heavy linen ticking. And that ticking will also have to be secured at hinging points 
in order to make certain that it doesn't, every time the piece it opens and closes, that the cloth doesn't just want to ripple and luft and eventually ease across the surface and wear out or, or pull away from its tacking points. Okay.